In this video, I'll teach you everything you need to know to learn how to use Fusion 360 to create your own really cool things. And to start, to create a new design, go to File, click New Design. And now a new thing that Fusion 360 has for 2021 is you could only have 10 editable documents. So you can see I've reached the max capacity here and it says it's read only. So all I have to do is go to here and click read only and I'll make that file read only. So now I have an open slot here for my new file. This panel over here is called the data panel and that's basically where all your projects are stored. If I click home, you can see there's different folders essentially. So I have 3D Printer Academy is here and then I have other folders and things like that. So these are all the projects and these are only read only at the moment. Uh, some of them are actually editable because of the recent projects that I've been working on, but the older projects are read only. So if we go back to this home button, I could click on my editable documents and here's all of my editable documents. Okay, so the first thing you need to know in Fusion 360 is when you create an object, it's called a body. So I could create a box by clicking the box tool, basically give it its shape like that. So that is considered a body. So if I open this drop down panel here, you can see that's body one and you could rename it. I'll just rename it cube. Okay, you can create all different types of bodies. You can create box, cylinder, sphere, torus, coil, pipe. These are very common. So if I create a cylinder, you wanna select which plane it creates the cylinder on. So you can see how the plane is changing. And there's these three planes here, the three origin planes. And I can also create the cylinder on top of another part of the cube that I just created. So I could create a cylinder on top of this cube here. And you could choose if you want to join it cut it, intersect, or make it a new body. I'll click join. So it'll actually join these two things here. So now my cube is no longer a cube. It is a, I'll just call it weird shape. So that's my weird shape right there. And you could turn it off and on just like this. And you could create different types of bodies like that and combine them in different ways. Another very common thing to do is to use the subtraction tool. So let's say I wanna subtract a, a piece of, like a pie shape out of that cylinder. I can just create a cube or a rectangular prism on the top face of that cylinder and I could use the cut operation and that will actually cut that cylinder. So now I have a modified shape and you could do all different types of modifications like that where you could basically add shapes and remove shapes and with that alone you could create tons of different things. So the next way you could create an object or a body is you could create a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom plane here. I had to rotate around to see it. And I'm actually gonna rotate back to the top view. This is the view cube. If I click top, it'll face the top view just like this. And here you can see I could create what's called a sketch. And a sketch is basically a 2D drawing that I can make 3D after I finish the sketch. So I'll show you how that works. I could create just a random shape like this. Okay, and if I click finish sketch, I can now take this sketch here and use what's called extrude. And I'll take the 2D shape and turn it into a 3D shape. And that is a very powerful tool as well. You could create basically any custom shape you could think of with a sketch and an extrude. Another important thing is in a sketch, there's a thing called a constraint. So let me go back into my sketch here. And let's say I want to create a circle. You can see it has a dimension that pops up there. If I type in 40, it limits that circle to, or it sets the circle's diameter to 40 millimeters. And this is called a constraint. And basically what I could do is I could change the constraint and it'll change what diameter that circle has to be. So now I could take that and I can extrude it up just like this. Let's say I want to go hundred. And now I have a tall cylinder that is exactly uh, 30 millimeters in diameter. You can also see down here, it says radius 15 millimeters. If you want to create gears, go to tools, add-ins, and go down to spur gear and click run. It's kind of a weird way to get to the gears, but that's how you have to do it. And I'm just gonna leave the default settings. The module's the most important. Actually, I usually use one. That way, um, basically, the number of teeth will correlate to the pitch diameter, which is basically the diameter of the gear. So let's say I want a 30 millimeter diameter gear. All I need to do is that. Saying I need to change the root fillet, I'll just make it smaller and click OK. It'll load for a little bit and my new gear is hidden and I'll move it. So you could right click on an object 
and click move and that way you can move and drag it around just like this. Okay, so now this is a good time to mention components. If you don't have any moving parts in your design, you don't really need to worry about components. But if you, if you start having joints and things that move around each other, then you want to create a component. So automatically a gear is a component and basically a component has bodies inside of it. So there's the gear body inside of this component here. Um, you can make any body a component by right clicking on it and say create components from bodies. So now the weird shape is now its own separate component. Also my gear disappeared because I turned it off I guess. Yep, so there's the gear and that is the difference between a body and a component. So if I want bodies to interact with each other, I have to make at least one of them a separate component. Okay, now a cool thing about Fusion 360 is you have this thing called the timeline on the bottom. This allows you to go back in time to any spot in history. So I could go back to here and let's say I wanted to change the shape. I could right click and click move copy and I can move the shape just like that. So that's a way you could modify things in the past. And then if I just click on this arrow here, it'll move forward to the future. And now you can see my gear popped back here. So let me go back to my spur gear. I can right click on the component and click move copy. I'll drag it over here. And because that's a component, it doesn't know if I just moved it temporarily or if I want to keep it there. So I need to say capture position. That's this button up here. Now that position of the component is captured. And now I can modify anything I want just by right clicking. I could even rotate it like this or do anything like that, modify the shapes. And with those tools alone, you could do a lot of really cool things in Fusion 360. Next, we have the display settings. Display settings are found down here. You can change the visual style. Right now I have shaded with visible edges only. And this is my favorite visual style to use. Um, occasionally I'll use uh, shaded with hidden edges. That way I can see um, through the objects. And rarely I'll use wireframe or shaded. You could change the appearance of an object by right clicking, go to appearance. I could choose a material and these are realistic materials. So if you render out your design, it'll actually look like the actual material. So I have an ABS plastic material here. I'll change the color, maybe this, I don't know, light blue color, just like that. So I have a light blue ABS plastic component here. And now in real life, shapes usually don't have perfectly sharp edges. So what you wanna do is you could use what's called a fillet if I click on this face, I could add a fillet. And basically what that does is it rounds the corners. And that makes it a lot more realistic. Another thing in the display settings is you could change the environment. So right now I have photo booth. It's just the brightest and easiest to see. You could have more of a moody dark sky look. And there is a really ugly, I think personally, bright blue, tranquility blue. I'm not sure why they have that setting. But I usually just stick with photo booth. You could also change the camera between orthographic which means there's no perspective. So objects far away look just as big as objects that are close up. If I change the perspective mode, you can see it's more realistic, um, but it's harder to see the dimensions and everything is skewed because of the perspective. So I usually design everything in orthographic mode. So now if you wanna 3D print one of the bodies or components, all you have to do is right click on the body and click save as STL. I usually use medium refinement. Doesn't really matter too much and I click OK, and then you could just save your STL file, and with the STL file, you'll send it to your slicer and then to your 3D printer. If you wanna render your object, go to Design, click Render. Now you can see I have a basic uh, low quality sample rendering here, and then all you have to do is click this Render button up here. Uh, you have to save it first, so I'll just click Save. I don't really wanna save it, but you would just click Save and then Render, and then it'll render out a really nice looking render. So that is Fusion 360 in a nutshell. You could do a lot of super cool things. It's a great program and it is very powerful. Um, so that's a very quick overview of everything you need to know to make your own things in Fusion 360.